Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hi, hello. It is Josh Bo, one of the many editors over at MavsMoneyBall.com, coming to you with another edition of Mavs Moneyball After Dark. This time coming to you after a fairly impressive 122-106 Mavericks win over the Orlando Magic in Orlando. First game back from the All-Star break. Mavericks haven't played since Wednesday of last week, so... It was pretty impressive to see them come out and get a, a solid double-digit win, even if there were some some worrisome spots there in the third quarter. Also, forgive my audio if it sounds super echoey because we are arranging stuff in my office right now, so my rug and my little love seat is not in here, so it's just <laughs> my computer desk and a wood floor, so it's, it's probably sounds like I'm in a canyon or something but i'm not here bad. With... no not bad not okay. bad so let me read you some numbers josh josh Bo. okay 57 points 20 rebounds 13 assists and six blocks we're not going to talk about turnovers that's a different story for another day but that is what the two man of luka Doncic and chris Stapps porzingis brought to the game tonight how do you feel about that I feel really good because I love when I write something and then the the immediate game, it's not uh, immediately shat on by the mm. performance. So this was fun. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I focused a lot inadvertently on my recap about how mainly about that third quarter, about how I really thought, and I want to, I, I want to circle back on it because the third quarter wasn't great, but in the midst of, of the weirdness of the game, <laughs> Chris Depp's Porzingis finished with 24 points, 10 boards, five assists, and five blocks. That's only been done by t- – the like a line like that has only been done by two other players this year, Anthony Davis and Andre Drummond. And that's per Bobby Corrala, who was looking at stats after the game because that's what he does. And he's only the second Maverick to ever finish with a 2010 5-5 five and five line, joining Dirk, who did it in 2006 and 2009. So, Ike – uh, all aboard Chris Stapp's Porzingis train because we're looking at you shared something today. What was the stat you showed about his shooting and just kind of his overall level of play? Like it was like midday. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. Uh, basically, because I remember we've talked about this on the pod and maybe even before we go on air, just to talk about points. And you were you've you've been looking at how many games has Chris Stapp shot over fifty percent uh, mm, from the floor. Yeah. And so the first 36 games Kristaps has played in, he only did it eight times. And now he has done it five out of the last seven games he's played. Which is really something. And I don't know, I'm not a good enough technical shooting expert to uh, to really like break down what is happening. But there is something to the way he's playing, the way he's moving, and the way he's shooting that is clearly affecting how like just the box score because his three point shot, I mean, he's four of nine from three and just like, there's just like, he's playing with a swagger. Like it's, it's kind of out outrageous. Uh, Jeff skin Wade 
you know, tweeted something towards the end of the game where he's like, in case you didn't know, 2010 five and five is max money material, something like that. And it's like, absolutely. That's what we're talking like. This is the sort of stuff that we envisioned. And, you know, the, the more impatient among us, largely me, I'll, I'll just be honest about that was hoping for this and and he's doing it earlier than I would have expected. This is he's look like he's really turned a corner over the last 10 games and I I just I don't I can't say enough about it. It's a lot of fun. I know and and it's going to be really weird to look back on this season and maybe think that the turning point was the second time Luca hurt his ankle because mm-hmm. it definitely feels like the Mavericks were almost forced into doing some things that they weren't doing before because without Luca they kind of had to reshape what they needed to do to get points. And so they kind of utilized Kristaps as a number one option and they just kind of involved him more. You know, it's not, it's not just about shots. And that's what, that's the big thing I wanted to talk about in terms of what I wrote about this morning is that it's not about shots. It's not about how many shot attempts he's been getting with or without Luca. It's just how much he's touching the ball and how much he's involved in the primary action. Cause Kirk, we both played basketball in high school. We're both kind of big guys that had to do the dirty work. You know how it is. If you go a whole game, and the only times you're touching the ball are when you need to shoot. And you know how nerve wracking that can kind mm-hmm. of be when you finally do get the ball. Yeah. It's, and it's hard to get a feel for the game. Right. And I think, you know, the first, you know, October, November, December, the Mavericks were kind of using Kristaps like a 7 3 shooting guard. I know our friend Tim Cato at The Athletic likes to call him, you know, 7 3 Clay Thompson. And that's really what the Mavs were doing. Like he was basically just a spot up guy. That would occasionally run a couple pick and rolls, but it was mainly, you know, Luca and Dwight. And then Kristaps would kind of spread the floor or come off screens. And he was really a bystander for a lot of possessions and a lot of games. And so then when he gets the ball, you know, it's almost like no wonder he kind of is forcing it or rushing it or looks uncomfortable or doesn't look as smooth as he can be. And then you add on all the other things like coming off the layoff and playing in a mm-hmm. new team and a new role. And so it's almost like I'm looking at it now and I'm like, Duh. Like, I was like, how did we not really pick up on this in the first couple of months? And I think that's been the big difference. You know, this game and the Sacramento game with Luca uh, before the All-Star break, like he's touching the ball more and he's just setting more on ball screens and he's getting like, it's not even touches that are leading to shots. It's just stuff like, uh, you know, Luca passing it to him at the elbow and doing a little dribble handoff or doing that with Tim Hardaway Jr. Like just that little stuff that keeps him engaged throughout a possession so that when he finally does get the ball in scoring position, it's not like, oh, crap, I got to do something real quick or, you know, I got to force this. I got to get this up because I might not get it back. Uh, and I think that's that's huge. It's made a huge difference. And like, it gets the, the thing you're talking about, the technical part about the shot, like... <laughs> In the in November, December, that was like a line drive, and now he's mm-hmm. getting like arc on it. So it's yeah, it's crazy, and it's kind of an example of just how mental the game can be. Because I feel like that's really what this what this is. I think I'm curious how much film they're actually doing, like independently and together, meaning Luca and Porzingis. Because the thing that I've noticed more than anything else is how they're looking for each other in ways that I haven't seen since that Detroit Pistons game in Mexico City. Obviously, they haven't played a ton together since then. But I had you cut a, a cut a gift for me for the post game recap. It was the first quarter give and go where. I mean, Porzingis is seven foot three, and he made a right-handed bounce pass to a cutting Luca that was just like I screamed. Like that's not <laughs> the kind of thing I would have ever expected from him. And so the fact that that Luca's looking for him and he's looking for Luca it is is just it opens up a world of possibility. I still get really nervous when Porzingis dribbles. Um, I also love how he shot fakes and then drives like into dudes like, <laughs> but you know, that's a, that's a minor whine compared to sort of what we're seeing here. And it's just a lot of, it's like a lot of fun. Now it's gotta be mentioned that the magic are a mess. Like they're still, some, they're, they're pretty securely in the eighth seed, despite being eight games under 500 shout out to the Eastern conference. But these are the sort of games where y- you gotta win. And you know, there are some other positive things about this game, but frankly, we've got another game to cover tomorrow night, and you and I have other things we want to do. So I think we should pivot. Oh, no, no. I, I want to hit on one more positive thing, which I was just, like, yelping about in my recap. Maxi Kleba is so damn important, I don't even know where to start I with know, him. Oh, man. How did he not get an offer sheet last year? I like, think the way is, I think the way he, he was, like, he was essentially a restricted free agent. 
Right. There, the way he was brought in there and due to his terms of service, I'm pretty sure the max, like he couldn't even be offered over a certain dollar amount. So the Mavericks, that was like the, the, the kind of clutch off season signing a few years ago is just, you know, he, he was kind of capped at how much they could offer him. And right now, like it, it can't be explained well enough to the casual fan, a backup five who can hit threes and block shots is as rare as as Chris Stapps Porzingis is the unicorn that just it's not a thing you go from roster to roster and I can't think of a single team and I'm sure I'm missing someone but I can't think of a single team that has a backup five that can stretch the floor like him and play defense like him no I mean you, you think about the two best teams in the league LA uh, the Lakers and Milwaukee and they would they would kill themselves to have him off the yeah, bench. He's, the, he's like the over-the-top piece, the guy that absolutely secures you wins. And he was huge tonight for Dallas because, frankly, you know, let's let's just let's just transition into to the third quarter. The third quarter was a mess for Dallas. Yes. And one of the things I was really surprised by was how Rick Carlisle kept playing Luca, and I actually think that bodes very well long term. But he made Luca play through play through the mud. Luca was one of eight in the corner. He had a technical foul. I think he had probably at least two turnovers, a couple of them bad. Um, it was not a pretty quarter for him. And the Mavs kind of followed suit, which is really you know frustrating. But I that Rick let them play through is something I, I I'm just I'm, I'm surprised about. And I'm going to be thinking about in the coming days. Yeah, and I, I mentioned this in our Slack, and I think that's a good point. He let him play through it. And I think the the nice thing is that he let him play through it, and they recovered. Like, it wasn't <laughs> they let him play through it, and then they threw away the game. And uh, so that was really good to see. Um, for me, it was like, I'm not a terribly shocked that they kind of gave up the lead in the third quarter. Because, like, Orlando is kind of a mess, but they're like that – they've got a roster that's kind of weird and frisky at times and they can get, you know, with the link that they have and Aaron Gordon and uh, Mo Bamba coming off the bench, Michael Carter Williams and, and Fultz is really long for a guard. Like they just got enough guys that can kind of just get in the way and funk up a game really in a weird, in a weird way. So the fact that the magic got back into it wasn't really the part that was like disheartening to me. To me, it was like the way it happened and like the body language and the fact that like, the ref thing came up and they were getting bad calls and they were bad calls. Like they were real heard, bad calls. The refs he, were awful, but right. that happens. Right. And uh, you know, the way that it just kind of like immediately, like, like instantly their, their composure or just everything about the, the way they're handling themselves just went in the tank. And you have Luca and Kristaps bitching at the refs back to back possessions while they're in the back court, while Lando's already in the front court, you know, trying to score. And it was just, you know, I didn't, that's the part I didn't like. I didn't like how they kind of melted down as soon as they faced some adversity, you know, because obviously, you know, teams are going to make runs in the NBA. It's okay. Just the way they handled it, just, it, it was gross. I didn't like it. Uh, but what I did like was that they didn't let that go overboard and they kind of regrouped and they got back into the game and they shut the door on them. So that was, that was really good to see them like kind of recover for it from it. I, I would hope that the, we don't see this, too much more often but the fact that they're able to overcome it was at least a nice bonus i uh, yeah and and i don't really know why like it, it's interesting that the team took such a such a like lead from luca in terms of playing bad because it really like it did seem to kind of trickle down into everyone um but you know they bounced back the bench unit was oddly stabilizing which was the thing i wasn't going to expect that game um other than that, I think it's it's worth kind of touching on a few minor things before we hop on out of here. Uh, first, Michael Kidd Gilchrist played four minutes and had three fouls. That was remarkably <laughs> funny. Like, he just looked completely out of sorts in the time he was out there. Not much more to expect. Um, yeah. Willie Cauley-Stein has been banished. Uh, He's which, in the phantom zone, baby. Like, if there was a game where I thought he would play against their big lineups, I thought it would have been tonight. But I suppose, you know, Maybe he'll play more tomorrow night. You never know because Porzingis might not play on a on a second end of a back to back. Um, right. so that that could be out there. Hopefully, I mean, I kind of hope if if Porzingis doesn't play, obviously they would need him. So 
other than that, there's really not much to to take away from this game. The turnovers were pretty bad, but most of them were like I I I don't know if, if you were watching much in the first half, but Luca had like three or four in the first quarter, where it was like watching Jimmy Garoppolo in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, where he was just <laughs> floating passes high. It was like, yeah. what is happening here? Uh, so I want to make one more point before we go. I'll try to keep it brief, but uh, sure. like one more thing that I liked is the the thing that I'm really liking about this KP like resurgence and the way they're using him and the way he's more involved is that when the Mavericks were kind of going through that rough patch when they had the injuries and they were relying on some of the bench guys to play in roles that they might not have been equipped, you know, me and you were talking about like, oh, man, they just didn't get anything from Brunson and Wright or they didn't get anything from Jackson. And you look at the box score tonight and they really, you know, you look at the bench, Maxie had a fant- you know, the fantastic game. Um, Wright was solid but didn't do much in terms of box score impact, but he was a plus 18 and Brunson was a plus 8. But you look, no one else on the bench scored more than five points outside of Maxi. And then you look in the starting lineup, and Finney Smith only had five, and, and Curry only had six. And the thing about Przingis, like playing like a true second option, is that when you get these duds from some of your rotation players, which is going to happen because they're the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh best players on your roster, they're not perfect. You can survive that and win games by double digits because you got Luca and, and Kristaps playing like all stars at the same time. So like mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like this kind of proves the process of what they were trying to build this year. And uh so that's just nice to see. You know, they this isn't a game that they might have they might have lost this game in, in November if Kristaps is having, you know, a bad Kristaps game like he would have in November. So I don't know. That was just that was cool to see. It just feels like sustainable this time. It does. And the way they finish out the rest of this month and into I, I want to say the schedule gets a little weirder and a little tougher at some point, but I'm not seeing anything. And the, there's they have, they have a really interesting matchup against the, the uh, Pelicans in a few weeks. And you know, there's some there's some tougher games the second half of March, but this is really the time for them to if, if they're not going to go on a on a like an honest to goodness winning streak, which this would be if they win against the Hawks tomorrow night, it would be their first multi game winning streak since the middle of January uh, or like in the uh, beginning of January, really. So I'm I'm looking forward to see what they can do. This is just the time where they need to work out the kinks and figure out who's going to be doing what, because. You know, we shouldn't look ahead to the playoffs, but naturally I think that that's probably what's going to start happening with some of these things. Um, yep. trying to think, I, I trying to think, Oh, um, you know, completely out of context. I want, uh, I would like everyone to know that Andre Drummond had seven turnovers and didn't play <laughs> in the fourth quarter tonight against the wizards as the Cavs won. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Just thought, <laughs> just thought people might want to know. That's a Thought fun fact. Thank you. Know. Fun fact. I'm, I'm here for fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to get some shit for that. And to my Whatever. Tomorrow. We're right. <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. You're goddamn right. I just, I love it. You know what? Like, it's so fun. I love talking to people about this and even arguing. Like, some people get really mad at me. And I don't mean to piss people off individually. Because, like, we don't get a say anyways. The Mavs don't care what we think. The only time they care what we think, and this has happened to us at Mavs Moneyball before, is when they politely or impolitely tell us to shut up. <laughs> yep, that's about it. It's about all the influence we have. Mm-hmm. Well, that's about all I got. Yep. I'm well, then go what... enjoy my Friday. It's I know. Hell yeah. PM. Not yet. Nine o'clock uh, Central Time. I'm digging this on a Friday night. So let's get out of here. So that'll be it for me and Kirk. Again, Mavericks beat the Magic 122-106. Likely me and Kirk probably tomorrow uh, for the Hawks. Uh, and we will see you then.